welcome to the Ashen Forge. I am Phantom X, joined as always by Diggs and the legendary Neurotoxin. We are saying Sog this evening. How are y'all doing? Doing good. Pretty good. Pretty good. We have survived the fires, so that's good. Yeah, you. I'm, I was just saying I'm glad everyone has electricity and, and uh, internet to do a show. And of course that you're alive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Classes at Santa Monica College were closed, so I did not have my hip hop class on Monday, but um, now, I did that, have my is that exams the one, yesterday. Is that the one you've been yeah. censored in? No. Okay. No. <laughs> that is dance in American culture with the racist 70 year old white. <laughs> um, so we haven't had a show for almost a month. So yeah. we have quite a bit, I think, to go over. Um, has anybody actually been playing anything? I think, Diggs, you've been in APOC. I have been playing APOC. I was originally hoping I might reach level 50 so I could win that armor, but it's way too buggy. So we'll, we'll get to talk about that. And I was hoping I'd get to play with you guys, but squads are disabled, so that was kind of pointless. Oof. Well. Wow. I do want to play, so when they are enabled, I will definitely get in, just just so that, uh, you know, I actually have some experience behind the substance of my bitching, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and you will have substance. So we, um, gosh, so there's been the live stream yesterday. Um, there was the update. I don't, I think the update came after our last show. What's it? The Forest yes. of, what's it called? Arenthia. Arenthia, yeah. Um, what else was there? Uh, there was, there's been a new, one of their dev discussions, which was always so thrilling. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of the majority. They're uh, doing extra life. I guess we should just say that as well for anyone that watches. They're doing a 20, 24 hour stream, I think, yes. right? Pathfinder D And it will actually be set. If I read, if I read it correctly, it's going to be set in the lore of the game. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, 50 years after APOC. And um, I think they said sandboxy, so I guess it could go kind of anywhere. But uh, miles, the, the donation milestones and other things you can control kind of where they go with the game, too. So if you are watching streams, definitely watch tomorrow. And I was wondering if you guys, uh, Nero, are you participating in that? The uh, this year? Record? Yeah. Um, I haven't planned for it, now. Okay. Because you have before, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. But, wow. you know, busy. I've got, I got way too many projects relative to the amount of time I have. So. Yes. Volunteer stuff. I'm, I already have a lot of things I'm doing that I'm not getting paid for. <laughs> I think you know, that was five and four years ago that I remember you doing as your life. And you actually yeah, have was, a life now. It was, uh, yeah, I think 2014 and 2015, uh, who's giving me now stuff, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's always cool to see, you know, streamers and companies and of course viewers and stuff, uh, getting involved with extra life, the amount of money that it raises and the money that it raises for a good cause. It's, um, it's always good to see it come back. And of course with that, there's always various perks and, uh, I can't remember. Did they did they list off any extra life perks that they're going to be doing? Any uh, skins or other promotions for participating, or is it just going to be this uh, this game in particular and all the funny things you can throw money at to make happen? Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, they, uh, well, I can pull it up here. It did mention. Yes, there there are things they would be doing. I don't honestly remember what it was, but uh, like paying money to make enemies appear and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Game codes were mentioned. Ah, neat. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, check it out. It's been a while since I've you know when we way back when with EQ Nexus for uh, EverQuest Next, we would I think a couple years we did some extra life. It was actually a lot of fun, um, a lot of giveaways. Mm -hmm. I was amazed at how many um, game companies like just sort of open up. You know, here I am, this random person who's really not within the the industry. No one really knows me. I just say, you know, I have a legitimate you know, website and show them. But you know, how many people just say, oh sure, here, here's some, here's some either physical things, here's some keys. 
you know, at the time, SOE before daybreak sent a bunch of stuff to give away, which we did. And it's just, it's just really, I think a, a really cool time. Um, I get like Lord of the Rings online had a bunch of game codes, but so, um, yeah, so definitely watch, um, I don't know if you'll watch all 24 hours, but definitely watch. I'm kind of, I'm curious about the lore component. Um, so I might actually peek in as well. So, and of course it's for a good cause. So, and that could be interesting to think about, um, what 50 years later means, uh, castle seats has happened or happened already. Like, I'd be curious to see what else is, what else there is to happen um, after castle sieges and hordes running rampant. But oh um, yeah, so I was hoping we could talk a little bit about uh, the changes to APOC um, this month, and then kind of go into what we saw in the dev stream. Um, I have been playing, I think I had gotten to level 10 at the beginning of this month, and that should have given me four weeks to uh, get to level 50 from level 10. But um, I uh, have classes plus work plus exams um, and a little bit of homework, so um, I've not been in, the, had time to be in the game. I'm sleeping a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, there are also several obstacles. So, um, for instance, um, uh, solos right now are turned off. We have an echo. Is that me? Or where's the echo coming from? Uh, I don't hear it. So. Okay, I wonder where I'm hearing echo from. I wonder if I have another. Well, as long as you guys don't hear it, that's fine. Um, so, um, yeah, so obstacles like solos have been turned off, so I can't finish the solo quest that I had started. Um, squads are now turned off, so there are squad quests that I can't um, finish. Um, duos are the only game mode open right now, and... Um, what that has meant is that uh, bonuses, so duos are on, but I'm still doing no fill and playing solos for them because I don't really play. I just hide until I get to the last circle. Um, and I don't know that uh, my partner would be into that. Um, so I do no fill, I go in solo. There's only like 10 people per match. That doesn't help when you have uh, is, is like, that, now, is that intended? What is the what is the max now? It seems to be set so that um, it Cute. will launch after 10 people queue. Okay. Um, Just so you're not waiting forever. We'll get to that. Yeah, I was going to comment on Steam charts. We'll get to that. Right. And so um, we have quests like um, outlive 75 players or outlive 500. I think it's outlive 400 players is one of the ones that in any mode. Um, and, you know, when there's only 10 people per match, that's kind of difficult, even if you get second or third, which is kind of easy to get. Um, and uh, so there's no bonuses when I go in solo, no fill in duo matches. Um, so I'm not getting the full amount that I would get if I were playing solo. Um, so just lots of obstacles not helping me to complete quests. And um, I don't know that I would be at 50 in any case, but I would probably be a significant amount closer. Um, and it doesn't really feel fun to know that you could be vying for this cool armor, maybe. But there's all these obstacles getting in the way of you getting the experience that you need to get there. Although I could pay $60 and get the extra levels that I need, but I'm uh, not doing that. Um, what? How's that work? Uh, you can buy levels or buy enough embers to pay for levels, I think. Um, 
but uh what's yeah. even the point then uh, in an early uh, access game what's even the point then you know if i wanted the really super cool armor development but, but is the armor really that super cool no I have no opinions, but some other people. It looks terrible. On this <laughs> podcast I think you had said, what, what? Do you want World of Warcraft? Or, well, yeah, compared to this. I'm saying yeah, that. You I, know, well, that's that's the thing. Like, we, we uh, talked about it in our own um, little group chat a bit, but. The aesthetics that they were showing. Now there's there is the one with the uh, the that orange suit with the uh, the two straps or whatever, where the guy's got two straps that are kind of come into a like a, a V, a, yeah, like a chevron sort of thing. Versus the woman's thing, it's got only buckles in the lower part, so the upper part's a little more exposed, and it's got uh, you know fabric behind it, but still. And instead of the two stripes going down, one goes down, and then one goes up over the boobs to trace them. It's, come on. Support I mean, for boobs. That's fine. I, I guess. Okay, so then the formal wear, um, the way they talked about it in the stream, where uh, a guy can't wear a wedding dress or a gal can't wear a tuxedo. Okay, I understand maybe you guys feel a little weird about a guy wearing a wedding dress. That's your own problem. A gal not wearing a tuxedo, come on. Ladies look great in tuxedos. Like, screw you. I'm sorry. Just come on. We got to get over that. My thing is yeah. they keep doing this weird thing with the shoulder. I don't understand. It seems like a lot of their armor <laughs> oh, yeah. has just – right. it's not on both shoulders. It's just it's asymmetrical on one shoulder, and I don't understand. Yeah. Like, you know, the first so the first one or two, cool. Bar. You know, that's cool. But when it's sort of a theme, of that, is that just – I don't want to use the word lazy, but, like, why it, are you not expanding out to different style – I it very just, much seems like a sword and board sort of thing. You've got the shoulder well, you, pad. You had a good attack, point. Yeah. Your attack arm. You've got the shield. And then with the, the leg that's forward that has the shield, that's the one that's got the, the shin plate on it. So that's the aesthetic they're going for. This is like a light fighter's sort of armor. I, you know, obviously this isn't heavy plate. This isn't like you know, scale or full chain or something like that. It's, you know, you got a couple metal plates, maybe some leather to help with some some scratches and, you know, walking through some thorn and brambles. You got your shield and your sword. And aside from that, good luck. I mean, I guess you have to be light like that if you're going to, like, you know, launch yourself into the air and then while in the air, launch yourself at something, which... I'm, and the mask. I'm so not into that. Context. I don't understand the mask either. I, I just, it's just, it's weird. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, to me, it's just not something that like, assuming we get to play that I'm going to be, oh, I need to, I need to have this to wear um, in the MMO. Like, I, I don't, it's, it's just weird to me. The colors are kind of, I don't know. It's just strange. <laughs> I, it's fashion. Who cares? Colors? Well, I yeah. care. That's the most important part of the game. Um, well, I, when I say who cares, I mean, there's going to be a ton, right? Because they're going to be selling stuff all the time. So, Yeah. I just know I'm fashion first. Fashion over function. Um, well, but, I mean, they, talk, they talked about having dye. So maybe you can just mm -hmm. get one version of the shiny butt suit and then dye to get the version that you want. Mm -hmm. With black and being they missed, the most expensive, of course. They missed out on a good... Uh, financial opportunity because they say the die will stay the entire time, right? So, so why not make it fade over time? You can craft the die or you can purchase the die. It's not a power gain, so it would be a cosmetic. Well, nothing set in stone. They they might reverse it now that they've said that. Is anybody, I, realize, I don't even oh, know. Crap, if we can make more that. money. I, no, I I, I don't know. Diamond. I I doubt that they would actually go to that extent um especially if they have rare dice like i want to say it was vindictus where you could sometimes get this super fancy die that wasn't just like luminous white like it was glowing it, it looked like you had a like a particle illumination sort of thing coming off of you and that was 
that was, I believe, the highest value die in that game. So I could see if there's something like that where there's like an actual qualitative sort of thing that you wouldn't want to spend a hundred bucks on like a bucket of the the super fancy platinum die only for it to wear off in three months. Yeah. I would probably be hoping to uh, have mine permanently look worn or faded. Like I could see that. A, yeah. a, a, yeah. a cool look. I mean, if you're like some sort of rugged outdoors person, of course you want your stuff to look like it's well worn and not like, oh yeah, I'm just some greenhorn. I bought some some ranger clothes at the shop and just went off into the forest. Like, well, oh, supposedly we're all supposed to look heroic, right? Because we're all heroes. Just because we've left Sanctus and we're venturing into Vera, we're all heroes. So we probably need oh, to that's look. Right. Look fancy and and clean and sparkly, <laughs> especially sparkly. Sparkly. Um, I would have wished I could have seen the rest of the uh, costume that Maggie had. Uh, maybe it's on the uh, social media somewhere because they're saying that was very representative of like in-game lore and style. And so, hmm. kind of seeing the cloak with all of that would have been really nice. But you know, I. I guess I didn't do my due diligence and look on social media. I'm sure it's posted somewhere and looks amazing. Or not see the cloak, which was the best part. <laughs> visibility cloak. Yes, cloak of invisibility. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty, well, I'm half disappointed that um, they didn't change the uh with all the bugs that were preventing me from getting to level 50 um i am disappointed that they didn't do something about yeah it, it does giving seem, us that armor yeah it does seem unfortunate to create such a goal and then remove key components for individuals um uh, and not change that goal and some yeah ways. and again i mean it was just felt crappy to, to i mean <laughs> enticing you guys to play <laughs> is a little bit of a challenge in any case um, but when there's no squads squads are turned off so I mean it's, it's kind of hard for me to say hey play with me because we can't play together so um, you know yeah, actually, I was I, I was going to say I would play with you after the show if I'm awake, but no, no. we can't. We can't. So yeah, we could do duos, but I mean, you know, um, it would be nice for us to be able to leave the game and and play to get leave the podcast and play together. Um, so yeah, I almost want to dive into a couple of other things. So. Um, I think we are moving along towards, um, hopefully the next chapter after December, um, will be castle sieges and we hear that they're working on some stuff. Um, but right now it's, uh, still the BR is the only mode. We do have a new map, which is a wintry map. Um, and it's smaller and that kind of, you know, has some pros. Oh, there's another thing. Uh, so that kind of has some pros and cons um, because it's so small. Yeah, I mean, it's it's faster. So each match is faster. Um, and that's kind of okay. Um, but um, um, the exploration. So with the larger map, it was easier for me to really be able to explore without being found, right. I mean, I can hide on the smaller map, um, but I can't explore for a lengthy amount of time um, and really show, because I'd like to do some video and show off the points of interest, um, but I don't have time to, you know, travel one place and really show it off before dying. Um, but no, it's really cool. There are places they added some new places after uh, last week. I think they added some a few new points of interest, which give us more places to hide. Um, 
And uh, it's not too difficult to get second or third place, actually. So um, that's pretty cool. I have actually started fighting more <laughs> um, and killing people. Um, I actually was able to finish a uh, kill seven people quest. Um, <laughs> surprise, surprise, after four weeks. Um, but uh, one of the other bugged quests is um, destroy. Um, it's like destroy 250 objects, something like that. And um, it used to be you could just destroy walls or anything that you would destroy would count for that. But um, right now it's bugged to only um, that only stone walls count as destroyed objects. So you have to go find the specific stone walls that will count, which hmm. also is not fun. And, oh, yeah. you know, everybody else is looking there. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, and uh, so, you know, I was able to get, mm, I found one spot where I can get um, eight walls destroyed per match. Um, so that was okay. It took a while to finish that quest, but I was able to finish the quest. Um, Why is but, that even a quest? Uh, for a scare bear. Just to to, knock, to, knock, to knock eight, knock however many walls down that you're having to figure out a max min of how many walls <laughs> per match. To, that just doesn't seem fun. It's yeah, it crime. seems fun. It's better. I'd rather destroy stuff than destroy people. You don't feel bad about destroying the wall? You don't apo no. apologize after? No. Say a prayer? Nope. You okay. shouldn't have built the crap. If you build it, I will destroy it. I mean, it's going to um, be destroyed by a firestorm anyway, so, like, what's it matter? There you go. Um, In fact, what's yes. the point of winning? Does the storm stop, or do you just get consumed? It's like, yes! You pretty much get consumed at the end. I was the last one. <laughs> I'm the glorious winner. Great. Great. What a victory. <laughs> About 57 yeah. minutes, what Chip says, to uh, go from the f across uh, the actual yeah, game map. Okay, on the actual like game across map. the diagonal, or that seems like a like short period of time <laughs> relative um, to the other game we cover. <clears throat> yeah, mm, well, yeah, for sure. Um, but, um, uh, what was there one last thing? Oh, so the map, it's a winter map. Oh, the points of interest. So on this map, they do not have names for the points of interest, which I wish they would sooner rather than later put on the map. So again, if I'm doing videos, exploration videos, I could... Um, yeah, for a team about those points one, of you actually know what the things are called. Yeah, it, it, it would be nice. Um, they added some kind of waypoint thingamajiggy, but I'm not it's using like the waypoint. What's the middle? Around. Was that the middle click? I saw something. Yeah, yeah, the middle button, mouse button. Um, yeah, so that was APOC. I think that's um, all there is to say about that. Um, so about what? APOC in about, total? Yeah, about playing playing APOC at the moment. Well, who else is playing? What do you mean? No one? I poked at it a couple oh. of times. and it Not just... of us. <laughs> uh, did you play the new map? I haven't played the newest map, I don't think. Okay. I'll have okay. to load it up and try it one time. I saw when it was loading, when I was mm -hmm. uh, downloading the update, but yeah. I don't think I actually... Nope. We've, jumped into it yet. We talked about some of the downsides of using ah. Steam. Um, you know, f uh, f as they have. Um, one of the other parts of that that I like is you do start to get actual data on, okay, how many people are interested in your game. Um, yeah. Now, obviously, it's not... Steam is not the only source of their clients, so it's, it's not the complete data. But I do feel like as a general uh, uh, community-wide, gamer-wide... 
picture. It gives you an idea because it's free. You know, people on Steam see it if they're going to play it. And the last, uh, so so this is a Friday night. The 24-hour peak is 31 players, and the last hour was 20. Um, their all-time peak was 572, which was right when it you know opened up. And um, you know, really since then things hover somewhere between 20 to 40 ish basically right and there's just playing it there's all kinds of things involved with that like um you know what quests do i want to do have i reached level 50 already um then uh how many other people are playing how long am i going to have to wait for a match um and for me once i start around 11 p.m. If I start playing around 11 p.m. or midnight, n- nobody's playing. So, like, yeah, you know, and, um, uh, <laughs> and it's you know, unfor- I feel like it's unfortunate because now they're they're backed into this corner where now and and I think there was a comment somewhere in the last stream on that transcript where they said something about having to spend you know they're having to keep up with the creating APOC basically. And so you're, you're in this sort of corner where you're, you're having to spend all these resources to keep an active game going that nobody's playing that equally, if you say, okay, well, nobody's really playing this. So we're going to actually just pull it for now. You're going to get bad press from what you can't even put out a battle Royal. I Um, go back to what I said last episode and I, I still believe it is the best thing they could possibly do. Build a town around an arena, let people schedule duels and tournaments and that sort of stuff in the space and have all the people in the town watching, able to go about their business, doing whatever they're doing, talking, moving around, dancing, making bets, placing ember bets. The people who enter the competitions can place bets or, or you know, have somebody put a wager and have that be their entry fee. You know, there's ways of doing it that having a town with a bunch of people where people are hanging out and you're watching other people play, you jump in every now and then if you're feeling kind of bold or if you think, you know, somebody you've been talking smack with is like, you know, itching for a fight and you're itching for a fight and you want to settle it or whatever. I think that'd be great. It actually gives the community a place to hang out. It gives people something, you know, meaningful for the sake of combat. And it gives a concentrated space where a lot of people can hang out. People will just be AFK. And having a bunch of people just AFK dancing, connected on their local client, you know, or on their computer or whatever to, you know, where the server's at is almost as good as having people fighting in that space. You will have people fighting in that space, though, because you have the arena. So it won't be like you won't be getting the load testing benefit. You will uh, potentially be getting a better load testing benefit having, you know, one, 200 people in one space. Half of them maybe not even there paying attention and only a few people fighting. So you can just see what's it like just for those few people with all those other folks around. That, to me, makes the most sense for what to do between now and sieges if sieges isn't like imminently going to release in the next month or two because if sieges releases maybe by the end of the year then i could see people actually getting back on the ball about wanting to play and fight yeah i mean i think so for me the the br is relatively fun when all the quests are working um Uh, I think one of the challenges or downsides for me, I mean, I have my favorite weapons. So like axes and maces are my favorite. Um, And then I think I don't really like the wands that the, the, the um, archery type stuff, crossbows, bows, wands, scepters, um, but the melee weapons, ah, I kind of like. Um, so I don't like the quest, like the daily quest that I need to use a crossbow or a bow, or even the uh, the mage book. 
But, um, you know, when I have quests for me to do that are especially the PVE ones, I'm having a lot of fun and I like going in and hiding and uh, running out at the last minute and, you know, wounding people or downing people or killing people even. Um, so it's pretty fun when the quests are working. Um, on the bigger map, I was kind of hoping that uh, one thing that could make that more fun is uh, adding crafting stations so that you have something to do while you're waiting for the storm to move to the next area. Um, but now that we have a smaller map, that feels fine. Um, so if the quests were working, this would be fine to keep going up through um, end of December, beginning of January, if castle sieges are starting after that. It's just, you know, um, when the quests you play, aren't working. So, so um, there were several comments in the live stream, and I'm curious since you've been actually trying to kill people. Um, there was a lot of comments about latency and trying to fix, fi uh, fix issues with latency. And I think blocking was one of the things. Have you, have mm. you noticed any issues? Very rarely. So I think maybe once or twice um, I've had latency issues. Um, but for the most part, no, nope, it's, it's fine for me. But, you know, we're in California, so. We're close to the servers, probably. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Um, and it has been, so actually it has been kind of fun. I have been um, killed a few times, uh, a handful of times for, by people uh, I know from Discord. Um, so that has been cool. Or I've seen them and they were supposed to kill me, but they didn't kill me. Um, and that kind of pissed me off, but... Um, um, but I have actually been able to play with a few people that I know, and that's kind of fun. But it would be nice if we had more people playing, for sure. All right. And we don't. And we don't. We will. So <laughs> We will. Uh, maybe. I think Sog is out at this point. Um, So, oh, I just meant not us, just uh, people. Yeah, in general. Yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> yeah. think that I honestly. No, they'll, they'll get there when each cat <laughs> yeah. uh, comes along. Yeah. Uh, maybe. I think Castle Siege will have people coming back and at least checking out the. the um, oh, yeah. I think they'll peak. The skills again. and abilities and stuff. They'll like peak. That. So again, we'll have to but, see. Yeah. But how many stay will be the, the question. I am, yeah. I have. And then you have two different things that you're having to maintain. Well, I kind of wanted to move on to Castle Siege based on what we saw in the dev stream. Did you did you take a lead? You just read the transcript, Phantom? I, I just did the transcript. So. Okay. No, so you watched in the trebuchet? Well, the interesting thing about the dev stream with regard to Castle Sieges were the... It's a little bit more than concept art. I guess it's in-game green captures of uh, the destroyed buildings, like with the holes in them, um, and the destroyed bridges. And it looks really cool, but that seems like that was the problem with Landmark, the pathing of the AI. How, how is the AI going to traverse... I'll be honest things. with you. While I believe their plan is to have a more freeform destruction system, the bridge just having a hole in it, for example, felt very much like damage states. Like, you know, it's a pristine bridge and then you hammer on it a few times and then it turns into the rough looking bridge and then you hammer on it a few times more and then the hole appears in the middle all of a sudden. It, it, it looked almost more like a damage state rather than you know, uh, a genuine chunk of flaming whatever just busted a hole in the middle of it. I could be completely wrong, but there was it's, there's a part in the transcript. You know, you mentioned more freeform, and I start to wonder 
because one, they say they're still trying to finalize how their their destruction mechanics, which baffles me if we're so close that they don't know yet. But um, it also makes me wonder: Do you have like multiple systems? Are you using resources on multiple different things? Why? What, you know. Um, but later on, towards uh, the end, before the Q and A, there actually is a comment where they mention they have tweaked things to where, and bridges were used. Uh, they said structures and bridges as a specific example that when they get destroyed, they don't necessarily break, but instead turn into an obstacle course. So but to, that's me, what I'm, so to right. me, that sounds like a predetermined destruction pattern versus like a physics-based right. collapse. And then on top of that, they did mention the... Um, An AI would become better, I would assume. The yeah. buildings themselves, the castle itself, can't be fully destroyed, like, you know, obliterated and vaporized from existence because it still needs to have enough of all the structure and such for you to be able to climb up to the top and access the crystal so or whatever the thing is so that's that's the biggest thing is they they have to make some sacrifices along the way to allow that to be possible and right. i guess that that makes sense the crystal itself has enough power to sustain certain parts of it you know structurally so you can only damage it a certain amount before the crystal just kind of holds the rest of it in place that's fair i guess you know that 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 thematically makes sense but it says that uh once destroyed um bridges turn into obstacle courses so it becomes harder to cross in order to reach objectives which for me just brings to mind uh, when you were playing uh, H1Z1 Euro and you were going around that um, road partition and the zombies. Oh, oh you mean when yeah. I just jump over the rail on the side yeah. of the road and the enemy. Yeah. Time. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's going to, if there's obstacle, if you can blow something up and it's going to cause a new path to open up. People well, that, are going to be taking advantage of that. But that's what I'm saying. It's it sounds like it's predetermined. So I would assume you could create your AI, your AI to, to to go about that in a predetermined. You would way. think that that would be the case with the rail that's permanently there in H1Z1, <laughs> but the, well, the that's AI still had so. trouble. Uh, the expectation I have is that they're going to kind of wind up and leap across, or that they'll like slowly climb up uh along the side and you know they'll go down prone and kind of crawl across or something you know or they'll have to come back with a ladder or something to cross it there's there's ways they can make it where it's kind of interesting or that that it's somewhat loony but you're right like if us players are air dashing and air jumping you know mega jumping and all that sort of stuff and NPCs don't have that level of mobility, that significantly limits the, A, the ability for NPCs to actually participate in battles like these, and B, it really means it is only the players that are gonna be, you know, getting around fast and, and you know, getting into things quickly. And, you know, honestly, that's the thing that's been the most confounding to me, the idea that they've talked about all of these tactics and all of this strategy and everything it's like no if you basically have a thousand people naruto run naruto run into uh area 51 or the equivalent of that in uh ashes here have a thousand people jump up over the walls air dash air dash air dash until they're you know at the top of the building what's to stop them from doing that are there going to be these massive air turrets that just swat everyone down or is it something that they're going to remove from the game and they only have in right now for some weird reason that's actually an anti-testing mechanic because it means they're getting data on something that doesn't actually exist yeah so there's a couple things there um with that in mind they did say that um perhaps only certain classes in the MMORPG would have this ability. And then there is, uh, there is some ability, I forget what the class kit is called now, um, but there is a class kit in uh, Castle Siege that allows you to jump up um, and over walls. Um, uh, but it's not supposed to be that high. It's something that you deploy and you jump on that. 
Um, oh, like a spring pad sort of thing. Yeah. Um, oh, that makes sense. But if that's going to be in, then that means the super jump can't be available for everybody. So, right. So um, I don't know if they, well then I guess the, the question is if they're not going to have the super jump, why even have it now? It's again, that, that becomes an anti-testing sort of thing that you're, you're getting data on a system that is not actually representative of the final model. And so it's, it's one of those, like, what are you doing? You're, you're, you're running the wrong experiment for the data you seek. Um, but that's the other thing I, I think I'm thinking about adding this uh, destruction model to it that adds another level of complexity. So even before we have AI going around maps and buildings without the destruction, we don't even know how that feels yet. We've already added this extra layer of complexity um, for us in Castle Siege. Um, that we're probably going to get used to and want to have an experience later on. Um, which seems to me to mean to me that it's going to take much longer to develop a game once you add AI onto that level of destructibility complexity. So I, I don't feel like what I've seen is compl like that they're planning on anything necessarily, not voxel complex. Um, it's not I, a lot of it, but it's somewhere in between. A lot of it seems very much pre, -de you know, a lot of the things that I thought were going to be somewhat not handcraftable by us, but somewhat adaptable by players seems to at this point be more um, predetermined as to, you know, how uh, the nodes advance and and not necessarily being able to transform everything. You know, there, there'll be spots here and there. The um, the, wall, the the bridge collapsing, that seems to be very predetermined in how that will be, which on one hand I say, you know, in my head it's like, well, that's going to get boring pretty quickly if you have like three ways it can fall and you're trying to play multiple matches. On the other hand, I'm kind of glad they're not trying to go down the pack, path of voxels because that was a disaster for our previous mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. um, but then there was also the comment of uh, you. Well, you mentioned throwing down a springboard. You know, they they talked about med packs and things being able to be thrown down and used. And and within that, they commented on um, you know, well, later this will be a system that we can even use for housing. So like basically being able to throw down a housing structure or blueprint or something. It just all seems like there's going to be a lot more predetermined, less freeform for players than what I originally envisioned or what I feel like Steven originally pitched. Um, you know, a lot of this to me starts, to, not, not everything, but a lot of this really starts to look like he's trying to create his own um, uh, art, uh, arc age, uh, arch, whatever you pronounce it, mm -hmm. um, his own version of that game, basically, um, with mounts and how and farms and housing and PVP and all the things, you know, a lot of what you're seeing here are in that game. Yeah, um, he likes arcades. That's one of the models that he's going on. But I, feel, I hope that's not true because I feel like that is not at all what was, in, you know, not at all in the Kickstarter pitch, <laughs> right? Um, so. Well, I mean, it's a lot of things. It's arcades meets, what's his other one? Is it Guild Wars that he, what's the other one that he played a lot? Hell, I don't know. Was it Guild Wars? Was it Dark Age? Was it No, it was that or League of Legends. I don't know which one of the two off the top of my head. I forget. But one of those two, I think. Eve, uh, huh? Not Eve. I mean, really, <laughs> if it was you, Eve, you, I wouldn't be here. You know. start looking at how a lot of these mechanics fall, and a lot of it has similarities with that, which is fine, but don't say you're revolutionizing the, the industry. But But it also does feel like we're getting further away from what this original pitch, this original vision uh, was. I and I, and that's fine. I understand games change as you develop. I, I, I get that. I understand. Um, I'm, I'm not going to complain. I'm not one of these people that's going to start tweeting nonstop at, the, at their account. You know, where's my refund? I want my money back. Where's my refund? I'm not going to do that because I knew that going in. But I feel like part of that, I wish people would actually stop him and say, look, this is this probably doesn't make sense. Let's not try this. Let's just and I don't feel like he has anyone around him to do that. So we get further and further into this, you know, what he likes to do, which it's his game. It's his money. But um, well, most of it's his money. But um, 
I don't know. I'm, I, I just have very much turned pessimistic towards this being, I'm not going to say it's vaporware. It's not, obviously. They have, you know, a functioning APOC now. So I'm sure something will come of this. The question just is what? And the big piece is still nodes, which is why the title is Don't Know Your Nodes, because we don't know the nodes, because we haven't had anything about the nodes. And I don't want a written, these are what the node will be. I want to actually see a tech demo of some, I don't, it doesn't have to be um, UE4 graphics like we see in APOC. I don't care if it's just, you know, some rendered, you know, s super simple graphic setting. I just show me the system. And I don't think they can because I don't think they really worked much on it. Yeah, so I don't I don't think we're we're moving away from the pitch the the Kickstarter pitch. I don't think we're moving away from that. Um, it's just we aren't getting information on nodes. Um, and uh, m the way I say it is, um, it is a problem if we can't even get an article for the divine nodes. So we've had scientific, we've had um, economic, and I think um, uh, divine nodes were supposed to be next, but the economic nodes, that came out five months ago. And if you can't even See, get... You, you mentioned that. I don't, think it, I don't think it's that he hasn't approved something. I don't think Stephen has any problem putting words out. He's a great talker. I think it's they are purposely slowing it down because at some point you can no longer put it on paper for people to see. You're going to have to show them. And so there's a long p delay in getting through every single one of the types because at the very end of that, the next expectation is a visual. And I just don't think I, we've seen things change. It's all to, to my eyes a demo. That's not gameplay. Um, well, my understanding is that it's written. The article is written. But Stephen hasn't approved it, and that well, See, for what whatever you, reason, five months is way too long. If you can't even get an article out, then there's. I mean, that doesn't take a lot of time. It's still being revised, or that after the article, he read it and realized, "Holy crap! I didn't even know what are we even doing. We gotta, we gotta redesign this whole thing." See, which, same thing. You know, which have commented that to be fair, functioning almost nodes were an alpha one. I highly disagree with that statement. We were tricked. Uh, we found out after the fact, or I was tricked. I don't know if you were with EverQuest Next and some of the things that were sort of demonstrated as gameplay, which were not actual true representations of game. They were just demos made for people mm -hmm. to view. I am almost yeah. certain that that what we have seen from their quote nodes, that is what that is. It is a pre-programmed something triggered this change that's not necessarily baked within actual game code. Because um, to our knowledge, everything, and we've been, we won't say who, but we've been told by people who worked on the project that everything that was shown, not outside of Landmark, everything that was shown specific to Next was more not necessarily gameplay, just sort of a demo that they created to show people something, and that that is what I see with what we've had for nodes so far. But I think they could probably do well. There's a couple things. It depends on what it is that you're actually wanting to see. So on the one hand, just how um, nodes grow from stage to stage. Uh, I think they probably have some of that done. Um, what they don't probably have, or we don't know that they have, is working models of the difference between an economic, a scientific, a divine, and um, for military node at the later stages. Um, and I, All right, I doubt. Yeah, not, I, I doubt they even have the experience how to, how that functions from everything within the world. I mean, that that's I'm, right. I'm with you. I think they have probably stage one and stage two um, of just basic node growth, but we have no indication that they've attached uh, the different types to those stages of growth or, uh, you know, um, the racial dynamics of that probably have not gone fairly far. Those all seem to be in the concept art stage, actually right now 
And the reason I always go back to nodes is because that is the single thing that distinguishes this from any other MMO. Otherwise, right. you, you take that away. This is just another generic uh, game based on tried and true principles. And, um, you know, you, you look today, you've got all these, you know, BlizzCon and a World of Warcraft that absolutely has, is doing the same thing it's done for the last five, six years. It just looks different. And you got to hunt, you know, hundreds of who knows how many thousands of people excited to try it. Ashes needs to be different in some way. Um, and, and without nodes, it won't be. I would appreciate, you know, some man have written or talked about on one of the streams of what's going on with the nodes, where they're at, what the, what the hurdles are, what some of the main changes they've made since the last time they talked about it, and that sort of stuff. Even if they don't, tell us what the actual system is and how it's going to work to at least let us know kind of what the the hazards and hurdles and delays and you know all of that has been where all the fine tuning has been going would probably give us a little bit better understanding of why it's taken so long and uh hopefully give us at least a little better idea of the overall amount of complexity as well as the amount of finality that it might need to have when they do release it because for all we know when they release nodes they want it to be something that you know it's set in stone they base the entire rest of the game around and so they want it to just be absolutely like you know vegas legal document solid in terms of like having all of the rules and all of the the systems and everything completely tuned and in check for every possible outcome and so if that's the case and they aren't going to release it until it's absolutely perfect i understand but tell us that that's what you're doing well i don't know it's it, when you can't even get the written part which doesn't take a lot of time right i mean compared to developing it um and uh you know classes how many classes do we have information about um how close like are we to six something well, just to eight how close are we to eight <laughs> that's what i'm getting at so here's here's where i get it. so you know my job in real life is sort of to understand people steven when he has something he wants to say he says it he is not shy about sharing something he is excited about that he's done that he's helped create he is not a shy person about, you know, Maggie's there basically to have him shut up, right? To say, quit talking. <laughs> so, and because he does, and he promises things that he can't, no, well, I won't say can't, but you wonder if they can deliver. But for some reason, if Notes comes up, he will not touch that subject. And to me, that is like a big, okay, you have no problem loosening, you know, losing, talking about everything else. Why is this specific? central part of your game something you tend to stay away from that to me is sort of like eh, that's a little concerning i don't see well, i don't personally see that as he's holding some big great secret um i personally see that as there's nothing there to talk about and it will be clear that there's nothing there to talk about so you just don't talk about it and to further that concern is another reason why, and I know you'll disagree with me, Diggs, I don't think APOC should have ever been released because now you're spending all this time, yes, on systems that will be needed for combat, but no, not on something that will set your game apart from everything else. Um, well, I... Um, but even in terms of just having articles written, so... Uh, a focus on APOC, um, it's, there's a potential that that could be eating into uh, development for the MMORPG. They're saying it's not and that it's separate, and that's why we have separate monetization for it. And there only takes a handful of people to work on that. So, I mean, I don't know. But what it shouldn't do, regardless, is stop articles from coming out. And that's what Maggie and Toast were there to um, help with. Um, so I would expect to see some kind of reasonably steady stream of dev articles, whether it's about nodes, whether it's about classes, whether it's about crafting, um, something rather than a five month gap. Um, that just seems like a long time. Maybe we'll get a 
plethora of stuff as Christmas gifts. I don't, I don't know. Um, but it just seems like we should be getting more information of something, um, you know, that we aren't. Um, and if we can't even get written articles, that makes me feel questionable about, about how far along development is coming. But maybe it's all happening in secret. Well, what was our last one? What was our last one? Oh, yeah. What is your favorite biome and which one should be destroyed? Oh, that's a. That's I don't, a I don't actually. I don't actually care. <laughs> that was just yeah. me being an, an yeah. ass. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. That's fine. Um, that's, that's just a, a dev question. That's a Pantheon Twitter question. That's what that yeah. is. Yeah. Yep. Um, but, um, you know, people are still active in the forums. That's, that's uh, uh, a lot of people are, well, people are still talking in the forums. It's not all necessarily positive. Um, and Discord is, you know, reasonably okay for Discord. Um, but um, what else is there to talk about? We, we uh, could talk about a whole well, bunch was, of other stuff. Well, there's some other things within the, um, we had kind of. I know, but we're at the hour. Yeah, so. um, I can go over. We haven't done a show for a month. Okay. We can, we can spend okay. an extra 10, All 15 right. minutes. All right. Um, one thing that I was very um, not uh, sort of curious about um, and not necessarily in a good way. Where was it? I forget how it was actually worded, but leaderboards for the top crop growers. Oh. I don't understand what the hell that's all about. That's um, right. We're going to have global DPS meters for everything. Um, you know, to me, I don't know why you would want to, <laughs> I don't know why that would matter. Like, unless I, to well, be competitive. I, I, well, but you know, what's the, what's the, I guess. Yeah. I mean, being but, number one, but, but what I, is, what is the, I guess we don't know sort of, well, what, what the top in what uh, number volume sales quality, um, to me, when you start throwing these leaderboards for fishing and things like crafting, that I start worrying is that there's not going to be a whole lot of depth to it. Um, you know, but way back when we had like Stephen on talking with us, now he didn't say yes to this, but I mean, you were talking about really in-depth stuff, right? About being able to sabotage another crafter, steal from another crafter. Um and so the, the idea of leaderboards with something like crops uh, makes me worry this is going to be, again, back to the arc age of you just put a seed in the ground, get some fake water to pour over it, and something grows. And that's just not super detailed like I was hoping it would be. I mean, I thought she would be so down with it since you're the farmer and they talked about, you know, who would um, have the most mushrooms. I mean... You could be on the list for growing the most mushrooms or the best mushrooms or um, picking yeah. the most mushrooms. I mean, I I would love to have leaderboards. I don't, boards I don't that care about. Know that I don't care about the most um, types, quality, being able to breed things. Yes, that that I would like to be known for. Um, that well, is, whether it's most maps made or I mean. Yeah. Explore the most know. areas. I'll make I a mean, printing press. I'll make all the maps I need. I, I just don't understand. I don't understand the rationale other than, yes, as you mentioned, is Stephen's competitive nature, that everything is a competition. Um, I don't even necessarily think of it in terms of competition, but if there are leaderboards and I can and I can be known for the stuff that I do. That's or that I like to do. That's, yeah, but that's immediate min-maxing for I, people who have 10 hours a day to spend on a game. I would say it's counterintuitive and it's a bad thing. Um, I think being the best at something is something somebody should be able to hide through exclusivity rather than have shouted from the mountaintops the moment they hit that you know highest tier. I think, for example, about this... Uh, I want to say it was uh, Adam from uh, um, back with a uh, uh, live feature rant was telling me about in Star Wars Galaxies, his uh, his weapon crafter dude, uh, Wookiee with all of the bonuses and all of the specializations made the best damn weapons like people will go from across the entire server to get that dude's weapons. And it was well known because they built a reputation. But if you, you know, didn't actually 
know all the circles and you know go through all that stuff you wouldn't know necessarily where it is or who it is uh though there was one day when they started making grenades and they only did it for one day because the shaking effect outside as the two factions were throwing grenades back and forth at each other it's like no enough i'm done and so I, I expect it would be more of the latter in this that if you are the best at something People are going to be showing up and fighting over the best. And, you know, obviously now you've got attention and, you know, feuding in the area that you didn't want. You're, you know, you make the best swords. Great. Everyone's going to want that now. And that's, I don't know. I feel like it's something that people should be able to do um, and retain their own secrecy and exclusivity rather than having it being something that's strictly advertised. You know, Diggs, I, I, I went to be known for uh, the, as the person who found something new, who creates the best quality of something. And I don't feel like that's necessarily something that goes onto a leaderboard. Um, I am, you know, for the other game we cover, super excited about this idea of crossbreeding and developing new things and taking mm -hmm. traits and putting them into new things. And when I see something, oh, we're going to have the leaderboard for the top crop producer. I mean, I, to me, that there's that indicates there's not necessarily going to be a lot of thought into the process of, of someone who wants to actually spend their whole time simply crafting. Um, because it is, because that to me, that individual, well, for me, and I, I would assume for other individuals, it's not about producing a hundred, you know, a hundred swords. Um, nobody actually, people don't want to do that. They don't want to have to hit, click a button a hundred times and have an, uh, you know, an inventory full of things they can't use. Um, and that's what that seems, you know, when I think of top, no, we just don't know much about it, I guess. But because mm -hmm. um, but that's the only thing that makes sense to me is a volume, because otherwise, you know, how are you judging quality? Like, how, how would you even make a leaderboard for quality? Um, unless you have, again, have some, I guess, in yeah. you know, system put it, in. But um, it just raises so many questions. <laughs> um I don't know. There, there was a game, Novus and Septio, that is no oh, longer. Play that I don't oh, think it's it actually. Um, yeah, they they paused development and started creating something else. But you know, they had a system of crafting where each component, you know, had a certain quality, and as you crafted more and more, you'd have to combine things to, you know, the quality would change based on that, which I think was a wonderful idea. But um, I hope it is not something. You know, somebody had the money to go buy a bunch of seed, and they had the money to buy a bunch of land, and they just put out tract after tract of, of corn seed walk down it with a water bucket and now they're they're the top on the leaderboard because they made a thousand corn plants um and that's that's the way that reads to me um that again far falls in with 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 arc age the idea you know i don't know if you played that digs but you know when you own a plot of land you can plant things but essentially it's just you put a seed in the ground you water it maybe some fertilizer you wait 30 minutes and something grows and that that is the extent of it and then you harvest it and when I see leaderboards for top crop producers, that sort of system is the first thing that pops into my mind, which, again, in my head was not at all what was initially talked about, um, you know, even when we had Steven on stream. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Woodship is um, <clears throat> saying that he'd rather um, renowned be by word of mouth uh, than through a leaderboard. But yeah. I'm just saying I'm just saying if there are I leaderboards. Agree. um I would want to be on leaderboards for other stuff besides combat. But um, for Wizard 101, I was the uh, Charles Darwin of uh, pet breeding uh, for that game. And I kind of uh, figured out how to um, breed the traits that you want for your pets and how to kind of get the closest to guaranteeing that your pets, your the, the pet's progeny would have the traits that you most want. Um, and, um, and I was famous for that. Um, so yeah, as long as there are ways, and I think that's what you're saying, is you'd like to be able to um, figure out through breeding or figure out through cross-pollination, um, best methodologies and that's not necessarily something that would be on a leaderboard but it still gets you the same thing that i'm hoping i'm hoping to get from a leaderboard um so i can see that there's a there's a it 
I hear leaderboards and it always reminds me of this 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 maybe not well known history of EverQuest two. Um they they had a lot of leaderboards when it first came out. You know, uh, first uh, server priest uh, levels you could go on. I think it was EQ uh, EQ two players. I think was the website, and you could see where you were. You know, compared to the other priests within the server and your level and advancement. Yeah. But there were also things like who had the most gold and who had the most whatever. Um, yeah. But there's this this story. Um, that is, I th I'm pretty sure it's true of, of someone like one of the first big gold sellers that had found a way to sort of item dupe and duplicate things through the auction system. And they got found, they got discovered because they were on this leaderboard and they had like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of plat, which at the time people, you know, if you had one was like a big deal. Um, I don't know, that, that's just a story that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why the, these leaderboards are such a big yeah, thing. Is maybe we have uh, EQ devs working on um, on uh, ashes. It adds an MMO aspect to the game. Holy crap! Where did they? Where did you get that mount? I think going back again to the word of mouth. No, I agree. I mean, uh, vanilla War, uh, World of Warcraft um, before everyone could be an enchanter. Um, you know, you would you would learn who sort of the top people in a profession were on your server because uh, those were the only people you could go to to get something. So, so you know, you, you worked hard and someone got a certain pattern through whatever. And you yeah, your reputation became known as the person to go to. And so you would literally, you know, add them to a friends list and wait for them to pop online, you know, whisper them, hey, I need your help and hope that they don't get pissed because, you know, you, they don't know you and you're whispering them. Um, you're offering them money, so obviously, normally they would say okay. But um, and you know, I don't, I don't know what it was like in WoW after vanilla, but during vanilla, I felt like every crafter was just incredibly snooty. It's like, for me, anything, any engineering, crafting, ten gold or less, just little gizmos and parts and stuff, probably just charge you a bit of silver in the materials and stuff. And it's just, you know, for for me, the idea of having being the crafter and having exclusivity in a world where all the items are exactly the same there's no point to it like i'm not getting anything over anybody else i'd rather be the person undercutting everyone else and getting that damn sale than being the person people know to go to than not mm -hmm. so that that to me was kind of funny but that's that was only in the context of a system where Everything is static. Nobody can really have any advantage over anyone else other than what schematics they have. And I had them all except one, so uh, I was pretty much covered. Uh, but for something more what we're, I guess, hoping and expecting, um, you know, a more advanced MMO to try to do and try to be, that somebody who truly specializes in making the, the best you know, whatever item, the best sword blades even, and they work with the other people to make the best hilts and best metallurgists and the best, uh, you know, people at sharpening and balancing and finishing off blades and stuff. And between the four of you, you make the very best weapons that anybody has access to. Like, that's, that's cool. And I think that's the sort of thing that maybe should have a little bit of credit to it again if that's the sort of thing folks are looking for but to that extent i think more of well is, is should it actually be on an individual should it be more leaderboards for guilds leaderboards for groups leaderboards for towns and cities and nodes and such because that would be a little bit more interesting if it's instead of who's the best you know player at this or that who is the best node at this or that I, I think, think that's, that's for normal. Chronicles of Illyria, we have something like that. Is it polite who wants to be like the horse breeder? Who wants to, somebody wants to be a horse breeder, right? Um, and like have the best horses for their kingdom uh, yeah. or duchy. Um, so, yeah, I think that should be a thing where um, towns or cities are known for, especially since there should be specific resources in that region. Yeah. I mean, we should expect uh, some cities to be the best at fire enchantments or the best at 
frost enchantments or something. Yeah, I mean, I would, I, I don't know, leaderboards just, anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, at this point, um, assuming all current in development, and I hate to say this because I was, um, I'd have to look at Kickstarter. I'm pretty sure I was backer number two for Ashes of Creation. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty certain. Um, wasn't one because I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted. But, um, you know, now when I think of uh, all the games that are currently in development, assuming all make it to release, I, I don't put Ashes of Creation in my top three uh, at this point. I hate to say mm -hmm. that, but I don't. Um, mm -hmm. As far as fun and sort of advancing... Uh, the the in the genre in general. Mm -hmm. Now they could come out with a nodes thing in six months, and it's like, damn, that shit is cool, and like totally mm -hmm. change my mind. And that's what I hope they do. But, mm -hmm. I mean, at this yeah, stage, I think, I think that's kind of the hope at this point is we can be, we'll be salty about what we have seen, but it's still very much hold on and wait because we we don't really know what's in store. It could very well be that everything that they actually have as they go forward with the sieges and then nodes and then finally to launch actually shapes up into a really suitable, really fun, approachable sort of game that it doesn't have a lot of demand to get into. But if you really want to put a lot of time into it, you can get a lot out of it. That's, I think, really going to be the goal for this one, as well as being able to build and maintain community here. <clears throat> Yeah, we. It's, yeah, yeah. good. I know. I was just gonna say we're actually now twenty minutes over. So. No gotcha. Problem. The the one last thing I was gonna say is, um, it, at the end of the day, it just needs to be mechanically different than every other MMO that's already out there. I know they they had said you know there was the concern or the the statement or whatever during the stream that they're trying to compete with all of the. Um, uh, foreign MMOs that are coming over and they're labeled as alpha, but they're really just being localized. And I feel like that's a completely false equivalency. I don't agree with whatsoever. This is trying to innovate something new, different, and that um, I don't they're, think they're in competition because I don't think they're, you know, those will happen whether or not this was being made and if none of those were ever being made, that would still have no impact on this game. So I, I feel like it's a really, it was a really kind of useless statement, but. Well, they were just uh, talking about APOC in comparison to other games that come out. Um, yeah, no, I know, but I'm saying yeah, like, yeah. it's it's a, it's a comparison that really doesn't make any sense because we're talking about not a new and inventive, innovative, coming from you know somewhere else it's literally the same thing we've more or less seen with perhaps one novel mechanic or perhaps two novel mechanics mixed together that we've seen before but not in this way i feel like they're 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 very much like rinse and repeat one and done sort of things i can't really stand to play any of them for more than about 30 minutes yeah i think all they were saying though is that is that their state the state that APOC is in is still in development rather than um, and is truly an alpha or beta, whereas what other people are calling uh, alphas on um, on Steam are really pretty much releases is what they're saying. Right. I mean, that's, that's a fair statement. Uh, My... My problem or my concern with that that line that you had there, so it wasn't necessarily the comparison. It was that they said we want alpha one and further testing phases to be relatively fun. I don't know that fun should be your goal in alpha one. Like, is that, you know, if you're actually trying to put an alpha client out and make it fun, it's like, well, you're. I don't think that should be your goal. I understand you want people to come in and test it. But if you're trying to make it fun, are you going to end up missing some bigger issues? I don't know. That that was the thing that stuck out to me mm -hmm. about that line. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so um, yeah. Anything else for tonight? 
we could probably go on and on and on. But no, um, loved all the costumes and the work they did. And I honestly, with all the tabletop stuff and all of the, you know, work related stuff and all of the cosplay, I honestly think there's got to be two Maggie's out there because there's no way one person has enough time for that. That is just ridiculous. Like if you if anybody saw the uh, costume she had at TwitchCon, it's like, what the hell? You've got you know wings and contacts mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, it's pretty exceptional. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, everybody, everyone had. Well, I think there was one dude that just kind of came as a as an artist, but uh, everybody else had pretty fun costumes. So that was that was definitely a nice touch. I mean, along with getting all of the uh, the new information and stuff. Having a little bit of that extra level of levity and uh, bacon coming as like meth man or whatever with the the, the bunny head was uh, <laughs> that was a little <laughs> funny too. Yeah, I mean that 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 part was entertaining. I'm glad that they had fun with it, and it was it was good to uh, good to get a chance to see that. So yeah, yeah, I don't tough. don't want to end on a salty note uh, because I do think we all hope that this actually transforms into something that is a super enjoyable and successful game and I I think they can can do that um, just Steven I don't think you watch this show anymore you might have initially (laughs) um, that's not salty at all (laughs) uh, I could honestly care less but um, if you happen to this is us not being salty (laughs) I really don't care about, you know, whatever. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> nodes. Something with nodes and relatively soon, please. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Um, we will be back next week with our um, Illyria show and actually might have a guest. Uh, Sog's not here with us. He's sort of putting that together. Uh, we'll put something in Discord um, when we know more, but we will definitely be back here next Friday. So. Thanks for joining us, and everyone have a wonderful weekend. Yeah, see you later.